Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about hypothyroidism and why you might have some drug interactions if you have hypothyroidism and if you are also taking HRT, especially estrogen, or if you're taking birth control, or if you are pregnant, or anything else that may increase your estrogen levels in your body. Estrogen and thyroid hormones do not play very well together and we're going to talk about why that is and kind of what you can do about it if you have hypothyroidism and want to be taking HRT or want to be taking birth control. You can take both medications at the same time, it just adds a little bit more uh, complicated steps to this in order to make it work properly. But we're going to talk about why this happens today. So you see a lot of things on your screen right now, and these are organs that we've talked about in the past. We have our hypothalamus, we have our anterior pituitary, and now we are adding our friend, the thyroid gland, to this mix. So the hypothalamus is going to secrete a hormone called TRH, which is thyroid releasing hormone, and that is going to float down to the anterior pituitary, which is going to produce a molecule, a hormone called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. So I can tell right off the bat, this is very confusing. We have two hormones that sound very, very similar. We have TRH, which is thyroid releasing hormone, and we have TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and they are similar, uh, but they have different functions. So thyroid releasing hormone causes the release of TSH from the anterior pituitary but then TSH is the key hormone responsible for triggering the thyroid to produce and secrete thyroid hormones. So when we are talking about the production and release of thyroid hormones, we are not talking about TRH being the key factor. We are talking about TSH. So even though thyroid releasing hormone has releasing in the name, when we're talking about releasing thyroid hormones, we are mostly talking about TSH. So now that I've just made it even more confusing than it needed to be, we have T TSH that floats down to the thyroid, causing the production and release of molecules of T3 and T4. And T4 is more abundant, so you produce more T4 than you do T3, because when they're chopped off of the molecules in the thyroid, uh, you're going to get both compounds produced, but you're going to produce more T4 than you are T3 for each time um, you release these hormones. But T4, although it is produced more, it is weaker than T3. T3 is going to be stronger, and that's why you have less of it, because you don't need as much for it to function pretty well. So we have T4 and T3 floating around in the bloodstream, and then these thyroid hormones are going to be picked up by cells in the rest of the body that are going to use thyroid hormones. And I'm not going to say a whole lot about the mechanism of thyroid hormones, but one of their mechanisms is to increase uh, the presence of sodium potassium ATPase, uh, which causes a lot of its aid in metabolic function. But you don't really need to know that, but that was just a little tidbit for any of you that were curious. So T4 and T3 are going to be in the bloodstream, and then they're going to be picked up by peripheral tissue, and then this peripheral tissue is going to leave T3 the way that it is, because it's already pretty strong on its own. However, T4 is going to be converted peripherally into T3, so the same T3, uh, that we have the stronger form of thyroid hormone, but it could also alternatively be per, uh, converted to RT3, which is reverse T3. And reverse T3 is inactive, so it does not function like T3 does. So for every molecule of T3 that you produce from the thyroid, you're going to obviously keep that T3. But for every molecule of T4 that you produce from the thyroid, you could either get a molecule of T3, which would increase thyroid function in the body, or you can get a molecule of reverse T3, which is inactive, which would not have any function in the body. 
And this is just another mechanism of regulation of thyroid hormones because, of course, you don't want too many thyroid hormones uh, circulating in your body that can cause a lot of damage. So uh, in making some RT3, you're making sure that there isn't too much thyroid hormone and too much thyroid activity. But there's another molecule that is going to be produced by the liver, and that's why we have this liver here. And so liver is going to produce TBG, which is thyroid binding globulin. And TBG has a very important job because it's another step in regulation of these thyroid hormones. So TBG is going to bind to the free T4 and free T3 in the blood. So when I say free hormone or free T4, free T3, I'm talking about just the molecule by itself. It's not bound to anything. It's free to do its action on the body. So free hormone is active hormone. But then TBG comes along and TBG is going to give T4 and T3 a big hug. It's going to hold it tight and say, no, you can't go to the other cells. You can't do what you want to do. So TBG binds up T3 and T4 and causes it to be inactive. So you can see in the body, you have a certain amount of T4 and T3 and a certain number of T3 and T4 that is bound to TBG. So the number of total thyroid hormones in the body is actually greater than the amount of thyroid hormone that is active in the body because you are always going to have some that is inactivated by TBG. So I hope that that little piece of it made sense because that is really, really important for talking about these medications and estrogen's effect on the thyroid. So there are a few things I want to talk about with estrogen and the thyroid. So any way that we can increase estrogen, so we're talking birth control, namely oral contraceptives, but you could also get this with um, an IUD or uh, other types of estrogen-based birth controls. Um, you could also get this from HRT. If you're trans, especially trans feminine, you're taking estrogen, um, this is definitely applying to you, especially one of these is going to apply to you more so if you're taking oral estrogen. And then of course, pregnancy is going to increase estrogen in your body. Although pregnancy causes some other interactions with the thyroid. Um, so it's going to cover a little bit today of the estrogen side, but just know that pregnancy adds some other complications to this pathway that I'm not going to address in this video specifically. But we're going to start off with oral estrogens. So how do oral estrogens and thyroid medications mix? So when you are hypothyroid, you're often going to be prescribed a medication called Synthroid or Levothyroxine, and this is just a form of T4. Uh, so you're going to take T4 in the form of Synthroid, uh, and it's going to go into your stomach. And then if you take your birth control or you take your HRT, it goes into your stomach. Um, there's, it's not a super solidified mechanism of how this happens, but basically estrogen prevents the absorption of thyroid hormones in the stomach. So, uh, it might bind to the Synthroid. And I hear this is Possibly the same thing with progesterone. If you're taking oral progesterones, that can also potentially bind to Synthroid in the stomach. Um, but that's one possible mechanism is that these um, estrogens and progesterones may bind up Synthroid in the stomach, causing it to not be absorbed and not even be able to cross into the bloodstream. Um, so that is a potential reason why you might not get super uh, effective thyroid uh, function from your medications if you're taking these orally at the same time. So what we suggest then is to make sure that if you're taking these orally, you're taking them at least 30 minutes apart so that you're not getting uh, this interference with binding and absorption in the stomach. So that's not the only way that we get interactions between estrogen and thyroid medications. So the other thing that estrogen does is estrogen acts on the liver and causes increased production of thyroid binding globulin or TBG. So estrogen causes increased TBG, which is going to bind up this free T4 and free T3 in the blood. Think about it when you're adding Synthroid, even if your thyroid is not producing a lot of these hormones, you can supplement them with Synthroid. Synthroid is T4. 
So if you're adding more T4 and then you're adding some TBG on top of that, this TBG is going to bind up your T4 so it's no longer active. So even though you're taking T4, it might not seem like it in your labs and it might not seem like it in your function. You might still feel like you're having symptoms of hypothyroidism. So fatigue, um, hair loss, um, things like that, you're going to experience more of the symptoms potentially because you're binding up this hormone, even though you're taking it exogenously, even though you're taking your thyroid medication, it's getting bound up by the extra TBG that was, has been produced by the liver in the presence of increased estrogen. So we decrease our levels of T4 and decrease our levels of T3. And we are also going to increase our levels of TRH and increase our levels of TSH. And this is just a little point to know because we also measure TSH oftentimes when we measure our thyroid hormones on lab tests. Uh, so with this feedback, so now we have decreased levels of free T4 and free T3. So now we're going to try to compensate in the body by increasing the amount of TRH and increasing the amount of TSH to try to compensate for that. So in order to fix this, if you are taking estrogen or uh, if you're pregnant or you just have high levels of estrogen, you might need to take more Synthroid your dose might need to be increased in order to get the correct amount of thyroid activity in your body. So let your doctor know if you're taking uh, HRT or you're taking birth control or if you want to and you have hypothyroidism because uh, as you can see, they have a lot of interactions. They don't play well together. So make sure your doctor knows about this so that they can appropriately uh, adjust your medication dosages and adjust maybe your route because maybe if you're taking um, oral Synthroid and you're taking an oral birth control, maybe you need to switch uh, to an IUD or maybe you need to switch to a transdermal patch for your HRT estrogen so that you don't get this interaction. So I hope that this video made sense and I hope you understand more about this mechanism and why estrogen and the, and the thyroid don't really play well together. And I hope you will join me in the next video and I will see you all in the next one.